Welcome, good evening, and welcome to St. Michael's to Evensong tonight. There are one or two notices that uh, if you have downloaded the service sheet, uh, or if you're in the building, you'll be able to see on the back page there. We have one more Evensong of this current term, so the 8th of March is our last Evensong, but the immediate Monday after, I hope you will keep the slot free and join us again. I will be interviewing um, Leo and Siobhan. Um, Leo is a regular member of the congregation here. Siobhan has been coming on as well. Um, Leo works in the city nearby. And they have not just been shielding, but super shielding, uh, because Siobhan had to have serious surgery and a, a transplant just before lockdown began. And uh, I'll be asking them some questions about their Christian faith, about their trust in uh, our God through hard times. And I hope that you'll be able to join us for that and that there'll be others you might bring with you for that evening. Then the next term of Evensong begins on the 17th of May. So Monday the 17th of May, and that is also our annual church meeting. So the annual church meeting will happen straight after Evensong on Monday the 17th of May. A verse from Psalm 103 as we begin. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them who fear him.
Our lesson is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. Now his elder son was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. Here endeth the lesson.
Most people remember the prodigal son as a story with a happy ending, a big embrace, a lost son brought home, and a happy father. But Jesus is here for the older brother. And like all of Jesus' stories, it is brilliantly told. After a hard day's work in the fields, here comes the dutiful, hard-working elder son. But what does he hear? There is music and dancing in the house because the younger brother has come home. So he was angry and would not go in. And the elder brother attitude, it is totally familiar to us, I think, and in lots of ways it is obviously right, but it totally un misunderstands Jesus and his heavenly father. Uh, the prodigal son is not a story with a happy ending. So for the second time, the father leaves the house for an emotional encounter with one of his sons, a son who accuses him. There is one basic accusation. There are two pieces of evidence. First evidence, verse 29. Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me a kid, not the least tiny goat that I might make merry with my friends. Many years, much service, no transgressions at any time, and no reward. Second piece of evidence, verse 30. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fattened calf. Half the business has been squandered, and you give him more. You give him not just more, but the best. This is unfair, it's the accusation. This treatment of the younger son, this thing you call mercy or love, it is unfair. Attitude, I think it is totally familiar, and it is obviously right. These are the wrong wages. The elder brother, he deserves more. The younger brother, he deserves less. And I said that Jesus, he is here for the older brother. The story has been building here all the way through. The, the stories, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost son, they all start in very real concrete events. The beginning of the chapter, then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners to hear him. That's verse 1, they all want to hear Jesus. But verse 2, the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, this man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. So he spake the parable not fair. That's why the, the Pharisees, the scribes, they cannot accept the open door welcome of Jesus, who says any from north or south or east or west can come into my kingdom. Not fair, wrong wages. And the Father's answer in the parable, Jesus' answer to them, is a shift from wages to family. From wages to family. Obviously, there is a price to be paid, and Luke's gospel will explain the death of Jesus and what happens to our sins, and a price paid in full. But the shift here is from wages to family. Just notice the, the family relationships in what the son says, the elder son, and compare them to what the father says. The, the elder brother says, this thy son. In other words, this son of yours He's nothing to do with me. But the father, he says, this thy brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. Jesus' kingdom is a family of the found lost and the alive dead. And the, the lack of joy in the elder brother, that tells you that he left home years ago. 
Um, not in the same way as his younger brother. He didn't storm off shouting, I wish you were dead and give me the money now. But he left home just the same. This is not his home. This is his workplace. This is not his father. This is his boss. And he does not want gifts and love. He wants wages. So there is a powerful message here to an elder brother. God here is looking for sons, not employees. And he pays what we do not deserve. And there is such love in the telling here. Jesus says, all that I have is thine. There is still time for the Pharisees and the scribes. But if there is no joy when the prodigal comes home, then you are not at home in the kingdom, the assembly, the church that Jesus is building. And the elder brother needs to come to his senses just as surely as did the younger. But also there is a powerful reassurance to the younger brother. Always there are the voices in your own head or maybe even from people at church or people you knew in the past that says the open arms of God, they are not real. They're not for you. Someone like you, he wouldn't want you as his son. Well, to deal with those voices, Jesus, he does not just tell a nice story with a happy ending. He also tells the rebuke to the older brother. The older brother, and God is right. Those people, they do not speak for Jesus when they tell you you cannot be forgiven. The moralist, the wage earner, Jesus is the son. He is the elder brother. No one else is. And he has the authority to say, my father, he welcomes the sinner, any sinner who repents, with open arms and the feast of the fattened calf. And praise God for his mercy that he does. Thank you for joining us. We hope you will be with us again next week and then for that interview the week after. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.